Since McLaren started building road cars again about 10 years ago with the MP4-12C, they have released a lot of models. And in the entire model range, those with the LT designation are the special ones, the track-focused ones, like this car, the McLaren 600 LT. Based off the Sport Series platform, these things are pretty awesome. And this one here is modified. So today, we're going to be finding out what it's like to own a 750-wheel horsepower McLaren 600 LT. This one is owned by Parker. He's got a pretty big YouTube channel known as Vehicle Virgins. Parker, come on. Let's talk about what it's like to own a 600 LT. Let's do it. Nice, nice to, to finally meet you, nice sir. Nice to meet you, too. So how long have you had this car for? I got this car in the middle of 2019, so it's been about four years. Did you buy it new? And I bought it new, So yeah. you spec'd it exactly like this. Yeah, so I saw it for the first time in at Goodwood Festival of Speed Ooh. in 2018. Got to do the, like, dynamic... I didn't get to drive, but ride along up the hill. You went up the hill? Yeah, I was like, oh man, this thing is epic. So ordered the car, Yep. went a little crazy with options, um, but Oops. I think the options are why I've kept it so long. They haven't announced official numbers, but there's about 35 600 LTs with roof scoops. That is. So it's pretty rare. That is pretty it rare. It was kind of disturbingly expensive, but as you'll see, it does enhance the experience. You can, it's functional. It doesn't just look cool. It's and you can, hear the, you can hear the wind <laughs> whooshing uh, in the cabin, which is pretty nice. Modified, what have yeah. you done? So it's got catless downpipes from IPE and a M Engineering 2. Okay. And it runs on MS109. Right now, I oh, put that's... 100 octane in it because it's hard to get MS109. And it's very cheap, um, you know, very very cheap race fuel. It was run. crazy. <laughs> I looked last night, actually, because I'm going to take this to Texas 2K. Yeah. Uh, the MS109 was like $35 a gallon. So whenever you think, oh man, it's like a little bit expensive. Holy crap. Think, I, I didn't know it could get that bad. I was just complaining about $5 or something yeah, for yeah. that thing. So the 100 octane in this right now is 10. This is about to be a really expensive mountain run. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to run out of fuel in like five minutes because I only put two gallons in. I'm just That's not good. We're like 40 miles up with no cell signal. No, no, we're good to go. So you've had it for, man, it's been four years, almost five years yeah, then, I can't, right? I can't believe that. Wow. How many miles? 26,000. We're going to hit 26,000 today. It's like, on the drive. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to grab the camera. I want you to walk around and show you the specific details sure. on the spec because you bought it brand new and then let's take it for a drive. Let's do it. Yeah. So the only aftermarket exterior bit, we've got the 1016 carbon fiber hood, which is basically me pretending I have a P1. So it's like a, it's like a poor person's crappy P1, basically. <laughs> you got a roof scoop and a P1 Yeah, hood. yeah. It's a P1. So yeah. the front bumper is completely redesigned from the 570. Uh, it's got a lot of weight savings compared to the 570. I mean, they save five pounds from having a thinner windshield, which is just like the most McLaren thing ever. The result though, is that it's been pitted beyond belief. I'm thinking that the reason that it has so many rock chips is because it's so thin. It looks like it's been sandblasted, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, the, the rest of the car is clear broad and it was a learning experience. We're gonna clear broad windshields from uh. now on. So it's got the brakes off of the 720S brake booster from the Senna. I like uh, the dry... blue accent, the blue accent Thank calipers. You. Yeah, nice. a lot of people are like, what the hell? Why would you do blue on purple? But it, no, I think it purple. looks kind of decent. Yeah. Dry weight's 2,740 pounds. So it's 220 pounds less than a GT2 RS. So it's pretty light. Another cool part about this car is the exhaust is like this long. Yes. So instead of having the exhaust go through the rear diffuser, which takes up space and eliminates some of the downforce, we've got this one massive carbon fiber rear diffuser and a super short, lightweight little exhaust up here. And it shoots flames. And it shoots flames. This part is coated so it doesn't melt. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> and uh, this was supposed to be carbon fiber, but they had a supply issue and uh, it showed up without carbon fiber. I, th I thought all the pieces were still carbon underneath. It is. It's just it painted, is. yeah. Which is kind of funny. Yeah. But I guess you can have a less high quality piece of carbon fiber Correct. underneath and paint over it. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to have a perfect weave. Because they still have to hit the weight targets because it's all exactly. carbon still. But the weave, pretty nice. Full diffuser mm -hmm. and uh, entire rear end. There you go. Every Thing on the car is carbon fiber except for these panels here. I'm just so like I'm just checking out your plate frame. Like gravity. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Some I song. Some I don't song, know. I think. It's yeah. really weird. <laughs> and then on the inside, we've got 
At the Ooh. time, I don't know if it still stands true, but these were the lightest seats in the world. Senna seats. They're actually hollow, so they like have this carbon shell technology to yeah. save weight. They're surprisingly comfortable, actually, which you will see. I've done road trips in it, and it's actually okay. And it's got a factory harness, which uh, I don't like to wear on the road because without a Hans device, you could just, you know, that would not be a fun you could time. die. Your yeah. neck would snap. Yes. That's pretty much it. There it is. Yeah. And with that, I think it's time to hop in and go for a drive. We've got a nice curvy mountain road. 100%. And a 600 LT with mods. So it should be fun. Let's go. Heck yeah. <laughs> well, that feels quite a bit different from the, uh, the Maserati I was driving. Yeah, it's a little more aggressive. <laughs> What tires are you running? They are uh, Bridgestone RE71 RSs. Man. I see you did the blue stitching on the inside to mm -hmm. match the calipers. That makes sense. Blue and orange works too. It's, I mean, it's McLaren. I look like a McLaren fanboy right now, actually. It's pretty, like, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> see, I always like, I feel weird, especially if I'm driving my McLaren, I yeah. can't wear McLaren merch. Because uh, then I just feel like, like that Ferrari, Ferrari guy. guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, now that I own a Corvette, I embrace it. I've got white New Balance. I've got my I was Corvette say, jacket. Do you have the shoes? <laughs> I do have the shoes. I was, my friend Cody gifted me a pair of New Balance when I got the car. He goes, here, these good. are for you. I was like, oh, thank you. I haven't done the jean shorts though. I don't think I can do that. Yeah, that's I pretty aggressive. I can't go quite that far. Senna seats are comfy. These are the touring spec though, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we have the fat American Senna seats. Yeah, yeah. I got the fat people seats. Yeah. Because I took a guess whether to get the skinny ones or the fat ones. Uh -huh. And then when I went on the launch drive and drove the skinny ones, they were pinching my shoulders. Oh, that's it's not like, good. Yeah, it's a British company, but it's for yeah. like a little svelte Italian man, like <laughs> tiny little European yeah. people. These are way better than 675 LT seats. The first time, yeah. first time I got in a 675 LT, I went to go sit. I was a lot fatter, and like my, I went to sit, my ass just got wedged into the bolsters, <laughs> and like I was, I was still like an inch off. I'm like, all right, Eddie, it's time to lose some weight. Like, That's hilarious. I'm like I do not fit You're this just car. You're covering in yeah. the seat. <laughs> I, well, I was wedged, so I was just like, all right, I'm in. I'm not going anywhere, but this is not comfortable at all. It's interesting that they look really uncomfortable but they're relatively comfortable and yeah, like yeah. lamborghini seats like in a performante torture. seem like oh maybe they'd be comfortable and they're horrible they are the absolute worst they are absolute torture devices so we're stuck at this one-way stop sign yeah. for the next two hours it's a stationary video now yeah it's a really dynamic video so what other supercars have you owned before before this let's see i've had a well i guess i can run through the list i yeah. started with a gallardo 2004 gallardo okay I think I, I I saw a video or a picture once. You were like in and around the car. It was oh, really? crazy. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then I had this. There was a there was a point. Sorry to interrupt you. There was a point in time where like everybody had a Gallardo. It was like the yeah yeah one hundred percent because it was a great V ten all around awesome car. And I had a Huracan, okay. which I supercharged. Then was that green? That was green. Okay. Then after that, a what was the next one? I think a Speciale Aperta. You had a Speciale one. Aperta. Mm -hmm. Do you still have it? No, I wish. Did you sell it? Yeah, for a lot it. of money. Mm, I I am really good at timing the market wrong, <laughs> so I bought it. Buy high, sell low. And then sold it for about what I bought it for. Oh, okay. And then it went from seven hundred grand to one point three million. Those like, are never coming back. Nearly directly. They're never after. coming back. Now they, they've gone down a Have lot they? actually recently. Okay. They're like listed for slightly under a million now, and I've noticed that what they're listed for isn't really what they sell for. Okay. Like Ferrari wants you to believe that they're more expensive than they are. Um, and then after that, I had a A12 super fast. Oh, love those. Uh, that was awesome. A manual gated Gallardo. Let's see. You bought a else? gated Gallardo? Uh huh. Had one for a bit, and oh. then a. Huracan Evo Spider. Ooh. I feel like I'm missing something, but. And then this. Yeah, and then this. A proper range of supercars? Yeah, this has been the one car that has felt fun and not gotten boring for the longest period of time. See, that's always the highest endorsement, because, like, 
what we do, we get to drive a lot of different cars. Yeah. And to have and to hold on to it has to be special. A hundred percent. Yeah. Because you can say positive things about a car, but if you really spend your money and keep the car, Correct. it's like pretty clear that yeah. it's actually a good. People ask me all the time, it's like, would you buy this car that I have, right? Like, would you buy a Shelby 350R? I'm like, well, I bought one and owned it for three years, yeah, so obviously. of course, right? <laughs> I'm not being forced to keep this car. Do you have that car? The, the no, I sold my Shelby. I sold my R8 RWS, and I kept the Z06 because the Z06. Have you driven one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh it's my fantastic. god, it is so good. I love that car. Yeah, I'm interested to see what the ZR1 and the Zora. Are so that's be what like. I was debating. I was debating. I got the Z06, and I was like, all right, the ZR1 will come out. I'll trade it in and get that. It's supposed to be twin turbo flat plane crank, I think. And then the Zora is supposed to be twin turbo flat plane crank, all wheel drive with yeah. the E Ray. So I view that as the poor man's SF90. Yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, maybe I'll do that. But I don't know. I love my Z06 so much. The Z06 I definitely like better than the E Ray. Oh, way more. For sure. Way, it's way a more. lot more aggressive yeah. of a car. It's like yes. not even close. Yeah. Um, it's like I, de I describe it as GT3 RS versus a Turbo S. Total 100%, different personality 100%. feel. Yeah. And clearly we like the track focused version. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you obviously you've driven 765 LT, you've driven P1, 720. Like you never thought about switching up from this, quote unquote, up to a super series. I car? like the way this car drives more than a 765 LT. Really? I think it's more nimble, it's okay. more raw. And then because I upgraded the power, it's yeah. just as fast. Yeah. And it's not a ton more money. Um, okay. I mean, look, if I had way more money, I, of course I would upgrade to a P1 over this. Yeah, uh, fair enough. But they're... Uh, the batteries go wrong, and they're way too expensive. Yeah, but oh. but if I won the lottery tomorrow, that's probably the first car I would buy. If it was like a, you know, a large lottery. <laughs> I won $25,000. Know, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I won five grand on a scratch off, and then P1. I decided to buy a P1. Thank you, Universe. It's giving me a sign. Time to go buy a P1. What is your favorite McLaren you've driven? P1. Yeah. Like without a doubt, it just—it's visceral at all speeds. The roof noise, the turbo noises, and it's like exhilarating. A hundred percent. Have you driven oh, a Senna? No, I'm not driven a Senna. Is that good too? The Senna is like a little bit gnarlier uh, from a like a noise perspective okay. and whatnot. But I think the the P1 sounds better. I don't know what the hell they did with the exhaust on the P1, Freaking but it's insane. like, if I could somehow do that to this car, I'd yeah. be so happy. I think the 3.8 has more charisma to the noise than the four liter yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I think turn around yeah. I think turnaround. Yeah, yeah, I freaking love the P1 more than P1 pretty is, much any other car. I drove the 918 after I drove the P1 and I was like, the P1 was more fun. It was 100%. more, it, the P1 feels like it, Sort of wants to kill you at any moment in yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Respect. The 918 was fast and fun and brutal, but it was like a little more tame. It's sad that it feels like semi boring. Yeah, which is a weird thing to say. Yeah. I so, should we switch now or? Sure, we'll switch. I got to drive 600 LT now. This is my fourth time in the passenger seat. You it's know, it always feels scarier when you're riding passenger than when you're so driving. So much scarier. Yeah. yeah. You don't have anything to hold on to and you're not in control. Asian driver, no survivor. <laughs> oh, no. That's what, what you have I here, gotten right? myself into. <laughs> Turn that now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, so you're you know, in, uh, I once had a car that's very similar to this. What? Had a carbon tub, had butterfly doors. <laughs> it was a BMW. I think I might know what it was. <laughs> it was a BMW i8. Yeah. But... And it had five less cylinders and yeah, but you 600 know, less horsepower. Yeah, same thing. Same it thing. is basically the same thing. Wow, we are gonna hit 26,000 miles. Yeah, You've driven this thing. Respect. You know, it, for a McLaren that's supposed to break all the time, yeah. knock on wood, it's been fine. Knock on carbon fiber. Yeah, exactly. I heard the more you drive them, the better they are, though. When yeah, they sit, that I just think that's good. probably the case. The one thing with these track focused cars is you hear every little pebble yeah. and piece of gravel 100%. peppering the car. Which both is. I like yeah. if you ignore the fact that it's probably damaging everything. But yeah, you just well. have to get past that. <laughs> I like what PPF is for. I like the noises. Woohoo! Ah. So it limits Man. the acceleration a little unless you click traction slightly reduced. Let's see, did it go on? Yeah, so right, battery yeah. management active. Yeah, so that's what happens when you leave the car for too long uh -oh. and it dies. Oh no. And then you, you don't have bring it back charger? to life. I didn't think it was gonna be long enough for the trickle charger. I forget oh. it, it wasn't that long. Yeah. And now that it's died, it can never be fully brought back to like its full health apparently. What? So my options are 
leave that light on that says battery management and have okay. a normal functioning car, yep. or have the light go away for seven thousand dollars. Did they buy a new battery? A new battery that's attached to a computer. <laughs> McLaren thing. Yeah. So that's not happening. How much have you spent on ownership of this car? Let's see. Not very much. Really? Um, I've done. Let's see. Five oil changes, maybe. Which, you know. I, I think I paid 1500 bucks each because I got it done at a buddy's shop, yeah. Avant-Garde Exotics. Then I've done the brake pads. I haven't had to do the rotors. Okay. Maybe two sets of brake pads and then tires and that's it. I mean, it, it, it hasn't had not any, bad. nothing's actually happened. And it's obviously out of warranty. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah. And you're not scared. It'll be what it's gonna be. Cool. Scared. <laughs> Because I've always wanted a 12C. It was always one of my dream cars, but I've been scared to buy one just because I don't want to have to pay for everything that goes wrong with those cars. I think this car just is one of the most reliable McLarens. From what I've seen, yeah? the 600 LT owners have had no issues. So, I, yeah. I mean, the 720S's will have their hydraulic suspension issues and, and a bunch of different things, but... I hear you also, slight topic change again, on this being smaller and a little more compact feeling. Mm -hmm. The last McLaren I drove was a 765, which yeah. it is ballistically fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the active rear wing and all that stuff is crazy. It's kind of ridiculous how you can just buy one of those. It is. Like you don't need any driver training. You're like, here you go, here's a nine second factory car. Yeah. That's almost how I feel about the Tesla Plaid because, all right, the 765 is a half million dollar car that looks ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna hop into that and think, well, this is gonna be slow and not aggressive. <laughs> but the plaid is like, you it's can just have sedan. some mom or some grandma yeah. whose son goes, oh, get this Tesla. Like, it, it, it's really, you know, it'll, we don't have to spend money on gas and just ignores <laughs> the fact that it's really fast Thousand and they accelerate it. So you have a plaid. I have a plaid, yeah. How does it feel to have lost so much money? <laughs> That's hurts. depreciated worse than the McLaren. Yeah. Which is saying something, Basically, right? Basically, yeah. yeah. What the heck? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even oh, know. That's Elon. Damn you, Elon! Yeah. <laughs> so do you think you'll keep this? Yeah. It's hard to the, save forever. That's the plan. The plan is to keep it forever. Forever. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I always. <laughs> You're like, See, yeah, sure, buddy. I said that about my Shelby because I yeah, love the yeah. 350R sold because I wasn't driving it. All right. I'm like, it's the last V10. I'm gonna keep this forever. Sure. Sold that, right? The one thing is, I can't really get this in the same spec again unless I found the same car. Yeah. But. We'll see. The plan is to not sell it. The plan is to not sell it. Let's keep going a little bit further yeah, yeah, down. Yeah, Because there is a fun. tunnel. We can make some noise. This thing shoots flames. It does. It's, just, it's hard to see during the daytime yeah. for whatever reason, but... Probably because of the sun. Yeah. Yeah, there's reasons, it turns out. <laughs> Did you fail physics class, sir? <laughs> no. Somehow did good. Same. I don't remember yeah, any it, of it, though. I that's found... crazy, yeah. Didn't you go to the University of Michigan? Or yeah, something? I'm yeah. a former mechanical engineer. Yeah, what did you go to school I went there for? Too. Oh, yeah, nice. Same, same, <laughs> same time. I actually found some of my notes from uh, like thermo and heat transfer and stuff, and I'm like, I used to know how to do this. No, it's I'm actually like, like it makes me feel dumber. Yes. Now. Yeah. Yes. I'm just like, I used to be smart. I yeah. could solve these equations yeah. and stuff, and I'm like, what? I don't think I could put myself back through that again. No. No, I am. Uh, Happy to not be an engineer anymore. For real. Oh, good noises. The downshift pops too. Yeah. And I love the McLaren paddles that are on the rocker. You I know, me too. One-handed shift. The only thing I was thinking about this the other night that I don't like about that is you can't pull both paddles to put it into neutral. Oh, to do like the clutch drop like yeah. a PRS or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. I do see that. I don't know how they would do that, but a lot of button pressing. Yeah, yeah. Like exactly. frantic button pressing. Exactly. Anything you don't like about this car? I always ask people, what do you hate about your car? Let's see. Every couple thousand miles, the under tray that's made of some thin aluminum or something, the screws start backing themselves out because this car vibrates so much. Uh, and then... And then it uh, it starts rattling like crazy. <laughs> so that's annoying. Okay. Um, let's see. Sometimes the windows, when you close the door, will like go down halfway. Okay. And then 
they won't go back up until you reach like 25 miles an hour. So if you That's ever like get weird, it's like every once in a while. But if you get in the car and it's raining out, you're like, no, I, I need to freaking, you know, like it's. That's bad. Okay. That's only happened once or twice, but like, what is that? Yeah. Uh, My friend tracked a 765 LT. Yeah. And you know, the window's down usually here, right? Yeah. And like on the second session, they just started kept rolling themselves up. They just kept, he's like, he's like trying to drive and put them back down. There's ghosts inside this yeah. car. Yeah. Other than that, I don't really know. I mean, that infotainment's not great, but like, I don't, I don't really yeah. care too much about that. Other than that, I, I really, I really do like the car. What's your favorite part of it? Probably just the way it drives, yeah. yeah. I'm also noticing a lot less like rattly, squeaky, random ass noises compared to the 765. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that they have like a lot of rattles. And I was yeah. like, my car has rattles too, but that's interesting that you think it has less. <laughs> Whoa! Holy crap, dude! <laughs> That sounds freaking awesome. Yeah, it sounds pretty ridiculous. Yeah. That was loud. Fun tunnels. It's a uh, mandatory requirement to put the windows down at Florida in a tunnel. Yeah, 100%. I think we got another one coming, although it's like a freaking 90 degree bed tunnel. That is true. Ooh, a little bit of turbo whistle too. I yeah, feel like when I'm you're... not hearing the roof scoop as So much. when you put down pipes, it's so loud you can't really hear the roof scoop uh... as much anymore, which is kind of tragic. It it sounds a lot more like hard edged than I'm used to with these cars. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. I uh, that, oh, thought I heard a weird noise, but no. That was me um, talking. Yeah, yeah. That was weird. <laughs> it's funny. You're, the beginning of your talking almost sounded exactly like the noise it makes when there's a problem with the McLaren. <laughs> That's the low tire pressure noise. Everything okay, okay. Slide. That's the thing I hate the most about the car. If it's slightly low on tire pressure, oh no, it loses its it, mind. It will beep at you and make the sound like there's a nuke coming, and then it you can't just deny it. Yeah. It will come back every couple minutes. And it's like crazy sensitive, right? Yeah. So it's like okay, I'm one psi down. Yes. Like, I, I don't want to stop right now yes. and fill it up. And you have to because it'll just go bah, bah, bah. That happened to me when I drove the P1. It was just like one PSI off of one of the tires. Whoa. Holy moly. This is the one lane road. And it felt like the world was ending. I'm like, stop. I'm, I, and it freaked me. It made me extra stressed. Because I was already driving yeah, the yeah, P1. No, it's so I was already stressed. And I'm like, now it's uh, upset at me. And I'm like, ah. So what do you think? Modified McLarens are fun. They are just... They respond so well to just the, I mean, essentially bolt-ons in the tube, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No, that is one of the best parts about the platform. Yeah. Is it's like two can You can do so much, so much to faster. it. Yeah, we're like back when the old NA, like on a Huracan or an R8, you do bolt-ons in the tube and it's like, cool, here's five more horsepower. Yeah. And then with the right fuel, this would have another 100 horsepower. So it's oh. like 100 wheel horsepower. Yeah, that's... It's 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 good. I, I remember why I love McLaren so much. It has all the supercar things. Doors yeah, yeah. go up. It looks good. It sounds good. I'm happy to hear yours has been reliable. I mean, yeah, clearly driving them is the solution. So apparently, yeah, yeah. And I really don't want to sell it because that many miles is not really good for a resale. Yeah. <laughs> and I, where is the mail truck going? That's incredible. USPS delivers. That up is here? incredible. He's smiling. Maybe he's really lost. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad you PPF up this car. Yeah. Hey, so, hi. Parker, it's great to finally meet you. Excellent to meet you yeah, too, Yeah, I've seen some of your videos before. and Likewise. Yeah, it's very cool to get to see what it's like to own a modified 600 LT. It's not the worst thing ever. Eventually, you need a McLaren. Yeah, I will have to do that at some point. Well, I say that as if it's such like a burden, like, yeah, I'll buy a McLaren. Yeah, let's go buy lottery tickets and buy P1s. $5 or so buy plan. P1. <laughs> Deal, deal. P1s for all. Cool. Well, make sure you check out uh, Vehicle, what's it called again? Vehicle Virgins? Vehicle, uh, vehicle Virgins. Oh, so you're a virgin. A lot of, yeah. I'm like virgin. nobody's, every, nobody's every, made that joke. Yeah, everyone ever. who's on the channel is a virgin. So ah, if you go on my crap. channel, you'll be born again. Okay. Do I get my virginity back? That's what I'm saying, yeah. Oh. That's mostly why people go on my channel. I see. It's a parody thing. You never forget your first time. 
<laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.